Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to paint day 2 of creation from the book of Genesis, while giving some biblical and scientific arguments for its design. Please like and share this video, and if you're ready, let's dive into day 2. And God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament, and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. To illustrate this, we can look back to the waters from day one. These colorful clouds, ignited by God's Spirit, are the same waters referred to in verse 6 and 7. Therefore, the firmament has to be an immense structure to separate the waters into two distinct areas. But what is the firmament made of? Could it be the same light-filled waters from day one? If so, this globe you see here has to be the firmament itself. In other words, the cosmic background radiation at the edge of our visible universe is the firmament, and through scientific observation, its appearance has been mapped out, and that's what we are painting today. What's even more amazing is the way the light parts of the firmament are grouped together, and so are the dark parts. This aligns with day one, when God mentioned that he separated light from darkness, creating the stroke of light that wraps around the entire universe. To top it all off, this light ring could create a day and night cycle for the evenings and mornings mentioned from day 1 to 3. In my next video, day 3 of creation, the earth will come into existence. But before that, we need to clarify something about Genesis. Many Christians these days believe that both the earth and the universe are very old, and I'm talking billions of years and that the six days mentioned in Genesis are not actual six 24-hour days. I, however, reject this belief, and so does Jesus. For example, people who believe in what is called the Gap Theory try to argue that there was another Earth, and that millions of years are hidden in between verses 1 and 2 of Genesis 1. But this is incorrect, and here's my proof. And he answered and said unto them, Have ye not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? So according to Jesus, the correct way to interpret Genesis is to read at face value. Since Jesus himself quotes that Adam and Eve were both made at the beginning of the creation timeline, one must conclude that in the beginning mentioned in verse 1 of Genesis 1, does not refer to a long time before Adam and Eve, but includes the six days of creation as part of the beginning. To argue against the view of Jesus is to call him either a liar, or a fool who does not understand creation because of his lack of scientific understanding. Good luck trying to argue on that front. Five days apart and a couple billion years apart is quite the difference, and as this timeline shows, according to secular scientists, humanity was created at the very end of the cosmic timeline, through evolution. Only a young Earth timeline has man and woman at the beginning, since even a day-age theory that argues that one day could have been a thousand years would place Adam and Eve at least at the middle of creation, not at the beginning. And if you disagree with Jesus' view on when the beginning was, what stops you from casting aside even more of his teachings? Who are you going to believe? Scientists who rewrite history every few years after a new discovery proves them wrong? Or the Son of God, who was there to witness when creation began? Well then, here we are, the firmament from day 2. And as you can see, the waters that it divides are still there. Please subscribe to catch the next video, 
where we delve into the formation of planet Earth. And comment down below which part of the Bible you'd love to see as a painting. This has been Ancient Artisan, till next time.